If you're looking at buying a car in 2019, whether you're in the process at the moment or you're thinking about doing so, chances are that you know that the process can be quite boring, it can be quite tedious, and in some cases, to some people, it can be quite scary. Today we're going to be going through the eight tips, hacks, facts, whatever you want to call them, that the car dealerships don't want you to know when you're buying a new car. Hey up everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here then welcome, it's great to have you here. If you like this video and you find it helpful in even the slightest way, I would appreciate if you smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Okay, so point number one, we're gonna go straight into it and talk about competition. If you've got a car in mind and unless it's the only car in the world, it's the only spec that you're wanting for, use the competition in your advantage. Go to the different dealerships, look at the different cars, play them off against each each other because they will want your business and I'll come on to that a little bit more in this video but use competition to your advantage when you're buying a car you could end up with a ridiculously cheap price more so than if you'd have gone to one place just for one thing and as I mentioned guys what makes that that point so powerful is that you can leverage it to get even lower prices Moving into point number two then, we're going to be talking about not trading in your car. If you've got a part exchange, don't trade it in. I'm not talking about not trading it in whatsoever and end up with a car collection like Jay Leno, but what I mean is, and it's no secret, that you get more money for selling your car privately. Look on Auto Trader, look on Piston Heads, look on Car Gurus, look on, there's, there's a million and one websites that you can have a look at to see what your price is gonna be. Look at cars at similar mileage spec and age to yours and just put your car up for that price. If you're not in any rush to sell it, then it's gonna work in your favor and you're not gonna get your charges taken down when you go to the dealership. Moving on to point number three, we're gonna be talking about bringing your own car finances. Now I don't mean bringing cash and some people do still think that cash is king when it comes to buying cars and that's not the case to put it simply the dealers make more money out of finance whether it's higher purchase or pcp and they make more money out of the additional products that they give you now if you can go to a bank and get a low rate low interest low apr loan for the same price as your car that's going to be a hell of a lot cheaper than if you were to go to the dealership and get their rates. Now you look at somewhere like Mercedes or BMW and their rates are something like 10%. Anyone who goes to their bank or even goes on to compare the market to look at loans, if you've got a good credit history and you've got a good credit rating, you could be looking at as low as 3%. And what that means for you guys is that when you go and buy a car, you're not going to be spending more money than what you need to. And I don't care what anybody says, if you're not buying a supercar, everybody likes to save money and that's what that's for. Moving on to point number four then, don't get hung up on the sticker price, on the base price of the car. When you go around dealerships, everyone has them boards or they have stickers on there that go through the price of the car. It could be 15 grand, it could be 20 grand, it could be 100 grand. Now, the only situation where this doesn't work is if you're looking for a, a 50 grand car for 15,000 pounds. Let's face it, it's not going to happen. Regardless of how generous the dealership is, you're not gonna get 30,000 pound worth of discount. The sticker prices in my eyes, and I come from a background of car sales myself, so I do understand this, is a guideline of what the dealer wants. That's what they want for the car, that's with no discount, that's them putting it kind of, sort of, at the highest level that they deem possible. To use it as a rough guideline, I'll come on to the end of the video with some more tips about that, um, and the very, very important tips to do stick through and have a look at them, but let's move on to the next point. To so moving on to point number five then, we're gonna be talking about not being afraid to walk away. Now, some people feel that they're pressured into actually buying the car on the spot, on the day deal, that sort of thing, and they say to you something along the lines of, oh well, uh, this deal will only work until next weekend. Um, if you don't buy this weekend, we cannot give you that deal. Ignore it, ignore it, it doesn't mean anything. They can give the deal whenever they want and whenever they please. Sometimes walking away can be the most powerful thing that you can do in the car buying process. Next thing you know, you've got Mr. Salesman or Mrs. Salesman ringing you up saying, hi, we just had a word with our manager, we can get you it even cheaper, can you come down and sign the papers? In which case you've got it cheaper than what you wanted it for in the ideal world. Moving on to point number six then, and it's gonna be about always negotiating. I'm gonna slap my hands as many times as it takes for this point to go into your head. 
always negotiate. The sticker price is on the car, it's got a base price that they're wanting to get for it, as I mentioned earlier. You ask for a discount, chances are they're going to give you it, unless it's unreasonable. If you ask for some floor mats, if you ask for some petrol, if you ask for some diesel, whatever, they're probably going to give you it. At the end of the day, as I mentioned, they need the sale more than you, unless it's a significantly unreasonable quote that you're coming out with, why wouldn't they do it? And if you're shopping at the end of the month, and this is a sort of 0 0.6, 0 0.5, you're going to get a better deal because they need to hit their targets. The dealership does, the manager does, the salesperson probably does, so they're going to give you a discount. Point number seven is going to be about actually considering these extra products. Now, when you sat down in front of a business manager, because the salesperson normally bring the business manager out, and they go, hi, sir, or missus, do you want paint protection, gap insurance, wheel insurance, tyre insurance, body insurance. It's just too much and sometimes if you do go yes to all of them you can be paying 1200, 1300, 1400, 1500 quid for some additional extras. The only one thing that I would recommend is to get as an additional extra is gap insurance especially if you get any car on finance it does what it says on the tin your insurance will give you this much if you write the car off the gap insurance will cover this between what you paid for the car. Simple as that. They might wrap it up in different senses, but as I mentioned, I used to be a car salesman. I used to sell these things on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's how it works. It's a genuinely good product, and I can't say, unless it's been a budget car, that I've never got gap on my car. Even my Golf R has, that's outside. But just a quick note, when it comes to the gap insurance, there are third-party providers. I was insured with Admiral at the time, and they had a company that did it for them. There's people like Car Care Plan, and there's, if you Google it, Google it, and you'll see the whole range of people who do gap insurance that aren't the dealership. That tend to be cheaper probably a couple of hundred pounds cheaper when it comes to the other things that you get the additional packages the additional products that they're trying to sell you so you've got pain protection number one that's absolutely useless do a quick youtube search and see what people think about it there's a car detailer who's from birmingham and i can't remember your name and if you've ever watched this i'm sorry but he's got a really good video on it and it'll probably come up if you search it Number two is the ILO wheel insurance. Now, in some cases it's all right. If you've got diamond cut wheels, it's probably good because they're gonna get worn, they're probably gonna get white worm, and you're gonna to need to get them done at some point. Body insurance, unless you plan on crashing into somebody, then don't bother with it. And also tire insurance, it only covers if you have a puncture as opposed to whether you need your tires changing. But anyway, back to the products, take them in with a pinch of salt. Don't, or don't always decide on them on the day. Some of them you do need to, which is the tire insurance, the wheel insurance and the body stuff. The gap insurance you can take at another time. And if you really want good paint protection, go see a good detailer and get a ceramic coating. So point number eight is gonna be about not concentrating on the price. And I know I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but this is a different concept. And this is what's ultimately gonna save you your money. So I'm gonna to step to the side, I'm gonna use this little bit of my garage door here to give you some information. So say you've got your car, you're gonna be part exchanging it in, it's gonna be worth 10,000 pounds, so I'll put that up there. The new car that you're gonna be buying is 15,000 pound, so the balance to change is gonna be 5,000 pound. Now the most important thing that you can think of about this, don't worry about these two figures, you need to be worrying about the balance to change. If they take £500 off their car and add £500 onto yours, that's £1,000 saved. But don't worry about where they put the money. This figure is what you're going to be having to look at when you're buying your car. So just before we wrap up the video, I've got a little mini point that I really couldn't put into a point in itself. Plus, I didn't want it to be nine. I wanted it to be eight. But it's give commitment to the people that you're buying from. So if they're sat in front of you, they give you that 5,000 balance to change as we've just been speaking about. And you turn around to them and say, hello, Mr. or Mrs. Salesman or manager, whoever you're speaking to. If you can get me a balance to change of £4,500, I'll put a deposit down right now. They will go away and they will do their damn hardest to get that price for you just so you can sign on that day. It's an exceptionally powerful tool. I had people say it to me all the time and I'd go into the office and I'd speak to the sales manager and he'd be like, okay, what's the situation, Josh? And I'd say, if they can get it to 4,500 balance to change, they'll take it and he'll go, bit -a -bit -a -bit -a -bit. yeah, all right, there you go. And then you go out, you get the signature and it's done. Use that to your advantage, please. So that's the eight points wrapped up. I hope that they're gonna help you in some way, shape or form. And if they do, like I say, smash the like button, consider subscribing to the channel. I'll do things all about cars, whether it's advice, security, modification, stuff that I'm doing to my car. So please consider subscribing because it really helps me. I want to hear your car dealership stories, whether the good, the bad, the ugly, drop them down in the comments below. We'll have a bit of a chat about it. I could probably help you out in some circumstances given that I come from that background. But as always, until next time, I'll see you then. <laughs>